<clears throat> and audacity in three, two, one. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Barbell Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Lynn, and I'm here with my co-host, Marissa Roy. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about something that I think is super relevant as we get into the new year. But before we dive directly into our topic, Marissa has super exciting things to talk about. We are super excited, yes, because today is episode number 53, which is officially the start of season two, basically just batching our podcasts by the year. Um, And so really exciting that obviously we've been through a full year of recording episodes for you guys and, uh, you know, haven't really missed a beat with that, surprisingly, even with like some of the the lag that we had a few months ago, we came up with 52 episodes in exactly 52 weeks time. So pretty stoked about that. Um, And so for our one year anniversary and for just the turn of the new year, we're going to be doing a pretty exciting giveaway for you guys. And so we are going to be putting together bundles for one or two listeners. We don't have it totally finalized yet, but we want to put it out there now for those of you who are listening at the beginning of December, because we're going to be running this giveaway and counting entries throughout the whole month. So you can put in your entry now um, and know that we're going to just continue building out whatever the prize is going to be for you guys. It's going to be epic. So we are going to ask that to enter this giveaway, you leave a rating and review on either Apple or Spotify with the podcast, because we have 61% of you guys on Apple, 26% of you guys on Spotify. That's 87% of our listeners. And uh, frankly, we don't really know (laughs) what the other platforms are it's the other categories like other so um for 87 percent of you guys you can leave a rating and review there it must be a five-star rating and review Uh, but if you do that we'll be able to see what day you submitted that rating and review and so if you submit it in the month of december 2021 then you are entered to the giveaway where we're going to be giving away barbell lifestyle podcast apparel which is going to launch soon probably in the new year uh, as well as gift cards to your favorite places so it may be gift cards to core nutritionals the nutrition corners lululemon target maybe even just a visa or amazon gift card we will make it epic. So we don't have details yet. So if you have feedback on what you'd actually want to win, let us know, but we're just going to build this out and have it be really, really sick for you guys um, to just benefit from for listening to the podcast, because we really, really appreciate it. Um, And so we want to express our gratitude that way. Yeah. Uh, So I was, was it yesterday or two days ago? I can't remember. Uh, or depending whenever this podcast comes out, but when everyone's like year of uh, look at it, I don't know. Cause I don't have Spotify wrapped. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like all the people who have us as their top podcast, that was so surreal and it was so cool. So, I mean, Marissa and I, we probably don't say it enough, but we are just so grateful for you guys. And you allow us to do what we do and to get on here. And, you know, we, we do this for you guys. And so it's just super cool to just know that we're like part of your lives and we just absolutely love it. And so that was just such a cool thing. And so we absolutely love it. So keep uh, listening on Spotify so we can be, uh, your number one podcast for 2022. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. I was thinking about it too. And Spotify is like, they are business marketing geniuses because like the wrapped thing ha- is like literally such a big thing at the end of the year. Now everyone wants, everyone wants to see everyone Spotify wrapped. And if they don't, they're complaining about it. So everybody's talking about it. And there's like going to be this sense of FOMO that like, Oh, I don't have Spotify. I want to get my Spotify wrapped. That's cool. I want data on myself. Right. It's such a good like marketing ploy. And I was just like thinking about that from like that side of things when like everything, everyone was posting theirs. Um, Cause it's like, you know who your favorite artists are. Like you can probably predict who's going to come up that you listen to the most because like you control your playlist. It's just so funny that we love, it's like Enneagrams, personality tests, Spotify wrapped, like people just love information about themselves. It's so, it's so funny to me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The the other thing I was thinking about though, when you're talking about the giveaway, so uh, you can, we'll go through and we'll look at them, but if you want to go ahead and screenshot your reviews and either email or DM us, Uh, We'll go ahead and take a look at them that way. So I know that sometimes they won't post immediately. Um, So yeah, so if you do take a screenshot and send it over, you'll be entered into the giveaway. 
Yeah, that's that's perfect. Um, and what we will say too is like there haven't been like a ton of people submitting reviews and all of that. So you have a pretty damn good chance of winning this giveaway yeah. if you do that. <laughs> so um, just know that like if you put your name into the pot, there's a very good chance that you could be picked, especially if we end up doing like two winners or something like that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So let's jump in to the topic of the I was going to say evening, but it's morning. So (laughs) topic of the morning. (laughs) Um, So we thought that this would be super appropriate going into the new year, because that is typically when a lot of people are setting new year's resolutions or they have goals and they want to start out 2022 or the new year, just with like all this momentum. And so a lot of people will be going into the gym. This could either be for the first time or they're trying again. And so we want to talk about gym intimidation or gym intimidation is what a lot of people call it. And so it's just kind of like it, it might be different for everyone, like what they experience anxiety around or what they're intimidated about. So hopefully the things that we talk about today will cover everything uh, that you might be experiencing or feeling. And we'll also talk about our past and also current, uh, intimidations and things that we're facing right now. So that's kind of what we want to jump into today. Yeah, definitely. And so I think the best place to start would just to be, to define what gym intimidation looks like. Obviously, like you said, it's different for everyone. Um, and everybody kind of has different insecurities and things that show up and how we show up at the gym or just anywhere in, in other places of our lives. And so what we really want to tackle today is I think the first thing I want to say is that like, you might not be able to get rid of it. It's really like, it's all about, you know, when we talk about fear, I think we talk about this a lot, or it's kind of said in like memes or like motivational quotes or whatever, but uh, you know, bravery is not the absence of fear, but it is, you know, doing those hard things despite being in fear. Right. And so you may not walk away from this podcast with no more gym intimidation. Like we hope that you walk away feeling better, more confident and more motivated to overcome it. But I think everybody has it to an extent and it may not be something that ever completely goes away. Um, but it's important to acknowledge like where it comes from. So you can understand it. Understanding is like the first piece to like actually overcoming something acknowledging it and then being able to build a game plan around like how are you actually going to overcome those specific barriers to you with what is holding you back from being at the gym or feeling comfortable at the gym in the first place. Yeah. So I I think kind of building off of that, that and Marissa and I, we, of course we share all the same views on a lot of different things, but we grow from being uncomfortable. So it may not be a super fun, great experience. The first few times you go into the gym, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So, you know, if you're experiencing some of that gym intimidation, anxiety, fear, any of those things that it will, it should get easier over time. So we'll share some tips kind of towards the end of some things that you can do that will help. Um, but I guess we can kind of dive in and talk about our personal experiences. And so when I was starting out, like I had always been super athletic. I was, you know, Marissa is the same way. So we were on a bunch of sports teams. So my first experience with the gym was weightlifting and conditioning for softball when I was in high school. So I was benching and I was squatting and I had someone as my softball coach, who was also a football coach. So (laughs) he was helping us in the gym and I had my team, right? Like my team was there and I had a a decent experience because it was just kind of us. And, um, and then I kind of carried that over into college and would go to our rec room and would kind of just use what I had learned in high school. And I tried to do that. And I was a little cardio bunny at the same time. And then my uh, boyfriend who husband now, husband now, boyfriend at the time, he was super into weightlifting. And so I would go to the gym with him, but for some reason, when I was with him, I couldn't like, I don't, I don't know. I was just like terrified. And I think it was because I just didn't want to look like an idiot. And I feel like everyone experiences that. Like, it's so different when you first start dating someone versus like, you've been with them for like five or 10 years and yeah. you just like <laughs> don't care anymore. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I would just 
follow him around and I wouldn't do anything unless he like specifically told me to do something. And he would like literally pick my weights out. And it was so like, looking back on it now, I'm like, Oh, come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but I mean, I was just scared. I was scared that I was going to look dumb, that I was going to do something. I was going to not have the right gym etiquette. And so I just chose to not do anything at all and just follow him around. And the more that I worked out and the more comfortable I got in the gym, the more I was able to kind of venture off and like do my own thing or do my own exercise. And I think what really, really helped was we started going to the gym together and we were doing like, I, we've talked about this before. Like I was doing like a five by five program. I got really strong, <laughs> um, but I was doing this like five by five program and I was doing all these workouts. And so if he wasn't able to go, I started feeling more comfortable going by myself and that, and like, we started having a more regular gym. So it, like I got to see regulars. And so I started building relationships with some of the people there. And so it wasn't as intimidating because it's like, oh yeah, uh, so-and-so like, and this guy goes over here and this guy is doing this stuff. And like, I know this lady. And so that helped a lot when I started to feel more like a regular. And I think that just again, over the years, having the knowledge and kind of feeling more comfortable in what to do. I, I just, all of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm not scared anymore. Like I actually look forward to going to the gym and I have confidence in doing exercise and I can ask for help if I don't know how to do something. So I mean, but that wasn't like over the span of a couple months, like that was years. <laughs> so that was like all of college and then graduating and like a year or two after. So I'd say it wasn't really until like 2014 that I really started feeling like, oh, okay, I can do this and I can do this on my own. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a process. Um, I guess if we're going backstory, backstory, uh, when I really think about it, my introduction to any sort of like gym environment was actually like when I was like 10 or 11, because my mom was a member of like a, a nice sport and health. And she would always like go to the gym to do her thing. And like at the time when I was like 10 or 11 years old, maybe nine, even I was uh, participating in a ton of like recreational sports. So I would play soccer. I play basketball lacrosse. And I was like, just starting volleyball, which became my main thing. But before that, basically I just wanted to go for the basketball courts because I just wanted to shoot hoops and like run around and like practice. And so she would take me to the sport and health because they had a big court and I would kind of like play with the basketballs for a little bit. And then I would like run around on the track and then I would like play with some of the dumbbells. And so like, I kind of was almost too young to like really understand gym intimidation <laughs> at that point. So I kind of like, just kind of like did whatever. And people were pr probably honestly looking at like, who is this unsupervised child, like <laughs> running around the gym. Um, but like that, like got me kind of comfortable. And then through, um, when I got serious about volleyball, which <laughs> was like really young, it was like 12 or 13 years old. I was like, this is my thing. I want to do it. I want to play in college like trying to decide that as a 13 year old, but basically got really serious with that, wanted to get really good. So I was uh, lucky enough to have my parents fund a trainer. And so on top of like practices, we would go to private group training with like me and a couple of friends. We did, you know, basic strength training exercises with dumbbells and medicine balls to improve our volleyball performance. So like all of that, um, you know, mixed with some volleyball skills training, like I got a very like hybrid introduction to strength training pretty early that got me really comfortable with like the idea of strength and conditioning at a young age. And so when it came time to like have a gym membership at age like 16, 17, when I could drive and like go myself, um, I basically just joined the gym that my mom was going to. And I, at that point, I don't recall having any like big barriers. Um, but I do recall just being a cardio bunny, like at that age. Cause then I was like really into the whole, let me get skinny. Let me lose fat. Let me see abs. So I would literally just spend an hour on cardio equipment and then like do like crunches in the middle, sometimes like mess around with the machines, but I didn't really get serious about lifting weights until 
like 17, 18 years old, which is still really young, but um, was just like, I guess the journey really did start pretty early. So I guess I have had less issues with gym intimidation, but I do want to touch on something that was like more recent because it, it just speaks to the fact that like, no matter how comfortable or like how long you've been in the gym, these things can still come up. So like when I first joined the gym that I go to now, the shop gym, it's a super like specialty bodybuilder, bro, um, you know, powerlifting strong man gym with like all the best equipment, like the, the whole nine yards. And it's like, you know, perfect. The oasis for like every bodybuilder. Right. Uh, but the thing with that is, is the crowd that it attracts is a lot of really serious bodybuilders, powerlifters, and people who really live the lifestyle, play the part. So I go into this gym and I start training there. And at the time I was training in the evening, so super crowded. And there's tons and tons of people who are just like, fucking jacked. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I just don't have any other good way to put it. I started feeling imposter syndrome mm. when I first started going to that gym, because before I was going to, well, before that I was actually training in a private facility. And then before that it was like gold's gym, which like, you know, I'm, I'm the elite there. Right. Because I'm a coach and I'm a trainer. So like, I felt like this sense of ego, I didn't have that anymore. Cause there's people who are using, uh, PEDs. There are people who are way more muscular than me, whether it's natural genetic or it is enhanced either way. All I see is like their muscles, their bodies with a pump. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Like I'm tiny. <laughs> you want to like walk around with a sign. that's like, I'm in my off season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like I was experiencing, I guess, feelings of imposter syndrome, a little bit, I guess, of an intimidation or I guess fear of, of judgment, because it's like, I do have a reputation in this area of like Marissa's a fitness coach. She's got her business. Like I think if people are like familiar with social media and just like the crowd in this area, my name can come up as like someone that, you know, and it's like, oh, well do Does she look the part? Like, does she like look like a bikini competitor? Does she look like this? So like, I definitely struggled with that for like probably a good month before I like really just kind of figured it, like found my own in the gym and tried to stop paying attention to it. But like, honestly, the only reason I don't think about it now is because I train in the mornings and it's like almost empty. <laughs> so yeah. like, I just don't see those people anymore. But like when I'm around that, it's very easy for me to get in my own head and be like, wow, like I, I'm just comparing myself to these people who may or may not be enhanced, may or may not be genetically just blessed. Right. And so it, it can like feed into my own self-confidence and what I'm doing in the gym. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I, and I feel that way too. Cause it's like, I'll, you know, when I, when we're in our, in our season, when we're competing, we're like super jacked and like, you know, we'll be tan after a competition weekend and people are like coming up to you and talking to you and cause you know, Oh, you're so, you know, ripped, you're so muscular. And like, Oh, you know, they've seen you transform and then you go into your off season and it's like, no one talks to you anymore. <laughs> like, Oh, you <laughs> went backwards. Yeah. 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 And so it's like, I, sometimes I do want to carry around a sound like I'm in my off season. <laughs> like I gained um, this weight intentionally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I know that it's like, you know, we talk about how we're in this really good spot and we can go into the gym and do a workout and, you know, we, we're not super like intimidated by like the machines or the weights or anything, but we still have that fear sometimes of judgment or like, Oh God, they're going to think that I gained all this weight back, that I'm going in the opposite direction that they can't see my muscles anymore. Or they think I let myself go. So even your most seasoned competitors, they definitely still feel that pressure and that fear of judgment, no matter how long they've been lifting. Yeah. I think, I think the big thing to take away with that is like, you know, you might be listening to this and you're listening to this because you haven't ever set foot in a gym or you haven't set foot in the gym for three years and you are terrified because you um, gained the COVID-19 and, you know, you just have no idea what you're doing in the gym. You're scared of hurting yourself. You're scared of looking 
you know, um, un uncomfortable or like you don't know what you're doing in the gym. There's a ton of people who feel that way. And like, we work with a lot of people in that position. So you might be listening to us talk and be like, well, at least you can go in and get your workout in and know what to do. Um, so we're going to provide solutions for that. But I just, you know, I think the, the goal here is not comparison and saying like, well, you're better off than me or, you know, whatever. I think, I think the real goal with this is to say like, we can all relate on some level, no matter how experienced you get. And I think it, it serves to, you know, give perspective of like, you can really be at any chapter in your journey and have these things kind of come up and, and throw you off guard or maybe throw you off track. Um, and so it's just a matter of constantly adapting and coping with these things so that we come out better on the other side, um, rather than saying like, oh, well, you know, you're better off than me. So like, I'm helpless and I, you know, I won't be able to do this because so, everyone can, can overcome their gym intimidation to a really good extent. I think it's just a matter of like meeting yourself where you are and going from there. Yeah. So I think that's a really good thing to think about. It's like, you know what, you walk into a gym and you have your own insecurities, but a lot of people there probably do too. Um, so I think kind of, we were talking about this, um, uh, before we started recording, but you know, I am 27 weeks pregnant and I am huge, <laughs> like humongous. I am up 30 pounds, which is something that I, you know, knowing it's like, oh, okay, for my BMI, I should gain anywhere from like 25 to 35 pounds. So I was like, oh, I should probably gain like 25. <laughs> Here I am with like literally three months left to go going, oh my God, I'm probably going to get up to like 40. And so that has been very, you know, I'm laughing about it, but it's still been very difficult for me to kind of sit with. And I'm like, you know, same thing that Marissa was saying, like, I'm a coach, I'm a fitness professional. Like, you know, does this mean that I failed myself in my pregnancy or, you know, and it's really hard because it's like, well, is, you know, am I eating like an asshole? No, I'm, I'm not, but is my body just doing what it needs to do to grow a baby? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, and so it's been really difficult to see my body change and, go into the gym. And so I actually haven't been going to the gym as much. And part of it is just because I'm no longer working at my school. And so I would on my lunch break, go to the gym. And that was just something that I would do. And now working from home, um, I've been lifting a little bit more at our home gym, but I did in the beginning kind of like, not necessarily avoid the gym, but I would wear longer, like longer, uh, tank tops and more loose tank tops. And I, again, used to, you know, walk around shredded and in like a tank top and shorts. And I started covering up a lot more and I'd be like not being able to lift as heavy or do certain movements. And there were people that I'd lift with, not lift with, but like lift around. And it's just like those gym regulars. And like, they'd be, you know, still pressing thirties. And here I am with like tens and like a tank top and like you know, people are like, you know, did she get fat? And I'm like, no, I'm pregnant. <laughs> um, but that's been really difficult. And so I, and I was again, talking with Marissa about this off air, like I wanted to go to the gym today. They were like, again, I don't have any sort of cable, uh, equipment or anything at my home gym. And I really want to do certain movements. And so I was like, I need to go to the gym. I don't want to go if I'm feeling not great. So I was like, I'm just going to put a self, like a coat of self tanner on. I'm going to do a little bit of makeup and I'm going to go to the gym and just do it because that's what I want to do. And I know that that's going to help me feel a little bit better. So, you know, we we're talking about how in the past we've been able to overcome it, but there can be different situations and different phases where you get a little bit more uncomfortable. And so that's where I am right now. So I do want to share that as well, because that's something that I'm currently going through. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's going to be super relatable. I mean, not only because we have probably some pre and postnatal populations listening to this, but like just knowing that like there can be something that comes up that throws yeah. you a loop for a loop. And, you know, it, it can be hard to just figure out how do I get over this again, you know, instead of, instead of yep. just for the first time. So yeah. And, and that's not to discourage you, but just to show like uh, you will get through it and you'll probably get through it over and over again. <laughs> Yeah. So instead of us just, uh, telling you our, our life history with weightlifting, we'll dive into some tips to help. So I think the first thing to do is if you don't feel like you're ready to step foot into a gym yet, I think it's a really good 
kind of plan of action to just start out at home. So whatever you, if you are following like a a home uh, program, a home gym or home workout program, and you have something that you're doing at home, you have a couple dumbbells and you can start feeling more comfortable with those movements at home before you move into the gym, that can be a really, really good place to start. Cause again, you're going to feel more comfortable with the movements and feeling a little bit more, um, you know, familiar with certain things. And I think that that would really help. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's like almost people look down upon themselves for it, but like you have to start where you're actually at. Like, are you comfortable going into the gym and trying things and like, you know, experimenting or like, do you really need to nail that down while you're at home? And like, it's really going to be different for every person, but there's nothing wrong with getting down some movement patterns at home with like a broomstick or a dumbbell or having someone look over it and tell you like, yes, you're doing it right. Building up that confidence is so, so key. Because once you kind of know that you're at least doing the movements properly and like you maybe know what weight you can handle with the dumbbells you have, you know, that's a huge stride forward because then you're only dealing with like half of the uh, insecurities that you had before with actually setting foot into the gym. So I think definitely starting out at home and, and then when it comes time to transition into going to the gym, what I tell a lot of my clients going through that is like, I'll ask them to just go to the gym that they've signed up for and just like set foot in gym. And like, I I told one client, I was like, listen, I don't care if you go, you walk in the door and you leave. Like, I just want you to literally walk in and like get to at least to the front desk. And then like, you can turn around and leave, maybe use the bathroom. Like, (laughs) that's it. Like, that's all I want you to do. And so she did that. And then the second time I told her, okay, go uh, walk on the treadmill and like, just just walk and uh, just like it, it be in the environment. Right. And then um, the next thing was I had her do her set of stretches that she had. And I was like, just go find a yoga mat, sit on the floor, do your stretches. And then she was able to integrate herself into like actually doing her lifts. Um, and so it, it took a, you know, a couple of days to actually get that far, but like, you just have to get in first because everyone knows sitting in the parking lot wondering if you should go into the gym is like the hardest part of getting into the gym. Yeah. And so when Marissa was talking about the shop gym that she goes to now and how the environment is like super bro and bodybuilder. So find the right gym for you. And that might change over time. So I think kind of those uh big box gyms like gold. Yeah. And like lifetime and and anytime you can kind of run into a wide variety of people who go there. Um, but I think that like starting out at like, uh, a primarily our audience is women. If you do like a women's gym where it's only women (laughs) and you know, that can definitely help you feel a little bit more comfortable or like a planet fitness or something like that. Um, but they do, tours when you go to a gym. So you'll have someone that'll walk you around, kind of show you the, uh, the different sections of the gym and that can help as well. Just kind of feeling more comfortable with the layout and like where things are, but you also kind of get a little bit of a feel of like, who's going to be going there. So I would also recommend trying to do a tour again, if they allow it at the time that you're probably going to go, because that will give you a, a really good realistic idea of like, who's going to be there, what the environment's going to feel like. Um, So I think it's really important that if you're a beginner, you probably don't want to start off at a super bro bodybuilder gym that you want to start out in a place that's a little bit more friendly for beginners. Yes, for sure. I think there's definitely like different types of people that show up at these different gyms and like it's because they it's how you market yourself right so planet fitness has centered their whole marketing campaign around this is a no judgment zone Mm -hmm. and that's really powerful for a lot of people there's a reason why there's planet fitnesses everywhere all over the country people make fun of the the stupid lunk alarm but like it is a booming business for a reason right so they've really capitalized on like listen you can come here you don't have to be judged we we this is our core value is we are not judging other people as important as that you embody that as a member here too um and kind of making that commitment to that is like so comforting for a lot of people so planet fitness is an oasis for a lot of people especially ones that are just getting started so you know i used to have kind of like a 
ha ha, I'm better than you opinion of like planet fitness, but like, I, I freaking go there now all the time because it's convenient and cheap <laughs> and they always like keep, keep up their equipment really well. So like, uh, sorry, I'm a fan. So <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, now I love going to different gyms and just exploring and just seeing what, you know, different machines they have and, and all of that stuff. So I I mean, and, and I think too, there's no, um, uh, stigma, I guess, attached to planet fitness. Like if that's the gym that you feel comfortable going to, then go like, don't worry about the judgment from other people or like, well, which gym do you go to? Oh, planet fitness. Like it, it's fine. If that's where you can go and that's where you're going to go and do your workouts then go there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great, it's great. I only say good things about it now. Um, yeah. I think one thing I mentioned, uh, just when I was talking about like my own experiences and this will tie into the next thing we talk about is basically just like the time that you go, uh, five, 6 PM is going to be crowded pretty much everywhere. And if that is something that intimidates you, then, you know, if you if you're able to work your schedule in a certain way, it is going to be way less busy in the morning, way less busy midday, early afternoon, pretty much any other time than like five or 6 PM. Uh, most gyms are a lot less crowded. So personally seven to eight is my window. I really, really like it. It's like, I never have to wait for anything. I never have to ask to work in with anyone. Um, if I do, it's just really, really, really bad luck that like someone is on exactly what I need. But, um, you know, if that's the case, I do one other thing and then I come back and it's open. Right. So, uh, going at less busy times, if you feel like the actual crowd is something that intimidates you, um, having to ask people to work in, having to, you know, uh, wipe off equipment, make sure you have good etiquette. Like if you're kind of worried about that side of things, then going when you know it's not going to be super crowded can be very helpful. Yeah. So I was actually talking with someone a couple of days ago who, um, she has, uh, quite a bit of weight that she wants to lose. She's wants to lose about, uh, 60 pounds and she, is intimidated by the gym. And so she chooses to wake up and go to the gym at three in the morning because she knows that no (laughs) one is going to be there. And that's not to say that that's what you need to do, but she's determined to go to the gym. She's determined she has goals that she wants to reach. And in order for her to feel more comfortable in the gym, that that's the time that she chooses to go. And I like, I I give her all the credit in the world because I am not getting up (laughs) at three in the morning to go to the gym. Um, but that's what she wants to do in order to reach her goals. Um, so yeah, going at less busy times is definitely a really, really good idea. So like when you say that my brain just goes, cause like, I'm super like just hesitant about like safety at like middle of the night type thing as like a female. Mm -hmm. So like (laughs) my brain immediately goes to, well, I might feel more comfortable. Like if I was alone, but like, there's like a, there's like a point of diminished returns of like, when there's like no people in the gym, then, then I'm just fucking sketched out. And I'm like, I cannot be alone in here. Where's the staff? Where's like, is the door locks? Like, I'm just like, I would go the total opposite direction if I were like alone, alone in her shoes. But I mean, yeah, shit props to her. Like <laughs> that's, well, that's awesome that she can do that. Yeah. And so and it's, and it's funny though, because it's like, yeah, if you go to a 24 hour fitness or a gym that's open 24 hours, like, yeah, there's usually not staff there during certain times, but there are gyms that open at like five in the morning. And I think that it's like, you almost do get a little bit of a crowd at that time because you have those yeah. people who are trying to go to the gym before work. Um, but it, the earlier you go, typically the less busy it's going to get, but yeah, it's funny that your brain went there. Yeah. It's like five, five, six would be like probably the busier morning hours. I think I catch like the end wind of that. Cause I go at seven, like six 45, but, um, it, even that is not going to be as crowded as 6 PM. Like it's just, no. it will not compare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the next tip that we have to help is having a workout buddy. So having someone that you feel super comfortable with, that you can go to the gym, that you can set up times, do workouts together. And that just alleviates a lot of the pressure because you have someone there with you. So if you do something dumb, you guys can laugh it off. Like you're there with a friend and it's way less intimidating than just being by yourself. And not only that, but that helps with accountability too. So if you have someone that you can be like, Hey, we're going to the gym at six. Right. And they're like, yeah, I'll meet you at six. (laughs) Like you guys are both there to keep each other accountable. And if you don't know how to do something, you guys can sit there and like figure it out, Google it, or, you know, it's just 
brings that anxiety level down to have someone that you feel comfortable around. Yeah. I'm actually going to be starting having a workout partner on Monday. Uh, Well, at this point, um, when you're listening to this episode, it will be yesterday, but um, I have a friend who she's been like just off her routine and like been struggling with some injury stuff. And she was like really looking forward to getting back into the gym. And we talked at the time where I was really struggling getting myself consistent with morning workouts. And so like, I'm kind of in a groove now, I'll be honest. Like, I don't think I need it anymore, but like, I'm happy to help. Right. So, um, we are going to be starting. She's just going to be like basically joining me and doing like half. I'm just going to have her do like half the volume, probably like half the weight to start, like just ease her into it, but like doing what I'm doing and just jumping in. Um, starting next week. So I will have that external accountability with a friend. And and it's it's just, it's just like the additional, like the safety blanket of like, okay, what is the off chance that I sleep in and I miss this workout? It's just not going to happen if I know someone's waiting there, like, cause I'm not going to leave them hanging. Right. Especially in my position where like, I'm kind of also acting as the guide, like definitely not missing that. So i um, going to have some extra accountability there. And I'm sure she probably has some gym intimidation that I'm, especially with the gym that I go to that I will be helping her get over with that as well. I'm so glad that she's doing this with you in 2021 and not 2017, Marissa. (laughs) Oh my God. I know I would have been such an idiot. Like I would just take friends through workouts like years ago. And this is just a tangent because like, I, I look back at myself when I was like 18, 19, even 20 before I like kind of matured in my coaching journey. And like, there are people that I coached back then that are still like, you still changed my life. I'm like, great. But like, I did so many stupid things. Like, I just thought that everybody wanted to train like a freaking, like, like maniac, like masochist bodybuilder like me. And I didn't understand the point of diminished returns with like total volume load and workouts yet. So I was doing like hour and a half, two hour workouts, like 10 exercises each, like, for, for every freaking workout that I did. And it was so stupid. I programmed other people that way too. And I'm like, I don't know how I didn't have more clients get injured because of what I was doing, but like, you know, the intentions were all so good and pure. So like people felt that coming through, but like, uh, there's just, it's just so much. I'm like, yeah. So if I had someone work out with me then, and like, be like, Oh yeah, you just join in with me, which I did. There was definitely a few people where I did that for them. Uh, I killed those people. Like they probably like couldn't walk for like a week. Like they couldn't join me on the third workout, like in a row. Cause like they were still sore from the first two, like, uh, yeah. So I'm smarter now. She's going to be doing like, if I do four sets of something, she's doing two. If I'm doing a hundred pounds on something, like we're just starting with something that feels comfortable and like, she's going to walk away and she'll be slightly sore the next day, but that'll be it. And (laughs) I feel like we need a a support group, like raise your hand. If you've been personally victimized by (laughs) programming. (laughs) Oh God. Between like the years of 2016 and 2019, that's really, really where it was. Yeah. I'm just remembering like flashbacks of like circuits and like, oh yeah. So it was brutal. Um, but so with that being said, um, let's say you don't have a workout buddy in your area. Let's say you don't have someone uh, your schedules don't, you know, mash up or whatever it is that you can't work out with someone in person. So the next thing to do is, you know, you can find like a, a virtual workout buddy or find a community. And so with social media now, and especially in 2021 versus like when we first started out in 2014, there wasn't a whole lot of people who were on and, and doing these like fitness accounts, but there are so many people now who are creating accounts and maybe they're not, you know, fitspos, but they're just people who are documenting their journey. And so reach out to people and, and connect, right. It's social media. Like the whole purpose is to socialize and to meet other people and find connections. Um, and not so, feed your ego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, maybe just you know, Hey girl, like slide into those DMS, like find someone that you can talk to and you can talk about your experiences and you can hold each other accountable that way. Um, or, you know, or, you know, you don't have to be this fitspo. And if you don't feel comfortable sharing your journey, like maybe, uh, you know, if you do you create a social media account and like hold yourself accountable and all you post are like your gym selfies 
from that day because it's like, Hey, I went to the gym. Like this was this day, this was my workout or, you know, this week I'm feeling this way. And that is how I started my account was just like, Hey, I want to hold myself accountable. I want to go to the gym more. And some people reach out to me for health and fitness ideas. So I'm going to try to share what I know currently. And if I can help one person, then that's the whole reason that I, I did this account. Um, no, I had no idea it would bring me to where I am now, but it just started with trying to hold myself a little bit more accountable. So it's a really, really good way to connect with people. And maybe you find someone in your area, or maybe you find someone halfway across the freaking, uh, nation. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you have one person that you feel like you can go to, and that gives you a little bit more accountability to the gym. Then, I mean, I think that that's amazing. Yeah, it's a win-win. Um, I guess the next thing to touch on with that is just like, how do you find those people? So like you can look at like the location tags of your gym or gyms nearby you in, in your area. Um, there's also tons and tons and tons of Facebook groups. Um, I've like recently joined a couple for like, uh, there's one, it's like brides like in this area who are like selling like old wedding stuff that they've used. There's one for like people who are like just moving to the Charlotte area. Like there's tons and tons of Facebook groups for freaking everything. And it's ridiculous. So like you could literally uh, group search on Facebook. You can look at location tags on, um, on what is it? on Instagram and like, especially in the Facebook groups, it's literally, there's literally groups titled like people in this area looking to make friends. Like that is what the group is freaking called. Like you can absolutely find some, some people who have similar interests and like kind of weed out that way. Um, so yeah, use it, you know, use social media for what it's supposed to be used for. Yeah. And with that being said, with Facebook groups, Marissa and I both have free Facebook communities. So if that's something that you wanted to join, we can put those links in the district the description, if I can speak. Um, <laughs> and yeah, just, just reach out. And you know, if someone doesn't want to talk with you, okay, well then reach out to someone else. <laughs> like, yeah, that's fine. Like you will find your tribe, you'll find your community. That's how Marissa and I connected. I mean, literally that we just slid into each other's DMs. We're like, Hey, you want to work out? She's like, yeah. Like, all right. <laughs> yeah. I love I meeting died. strangers on the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we're, but, all about, um, we're all about safety here. <laughs> yeah. No, but in all seriousness, like that's how we uh, meet our clients. That's how I build up my staff. Like it's all through social media. And so mm-hmm. it's like, we really have to figure out like what, you know, does this person like, is there, are they similar to me? Are they, you know, in the same area? Do they express the same interest, same schedule? Like, you know, it's, definitely like be cautious because there is catfishing and all that crap that goes on, but, um, you can definitely figure out ways to make friends and find people that are going to help you along in this journey. Yeah. So the next tip, I I feel like we shouldn't move this around a tiny bit, but let's start with some group classes. So if you're not feeling hundred percent comfortable going into the weight section, or, uh, if you don't feel comfortable going and hopping on, you know, cardio machine, start with a group class. So it can be Zumba, it could be yoga, it could be, you know, what, whatever your gym offers again, if they do. Um, but it's usually a lot easier because you're following along with the instructor. And so you're doing everything that they're telling you to do. And, you know, if you don't know how to do something, they're more than likely going to help you. You can choose weights that you feel comfortable with. Um, but it's a really good way to just feel like you're doing something, you're getting in a good workout. Um, you don't have to think about it because the person in front of the room is telling you what to do. Um, but that also helps because if you go to a certain class at a particular particular time, more than likely you're going to see kind of the same faces. And so, uh, you might become a regular and you might start to build relationships with people there. So the more times you go to the gym, you see some friendly faces and it just makes it a little bit easier and and more comfortable. So if you do venture out into the weight room, there might be some people that you've seen before, um, some people that you can go up and talk to. And I feel like that's just a really good, like intro level to the gym. Totally. And did you mention body pump or am I imagining things? 
uh, you're imagining things, but I definitely did that when I was in college. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was going to mention that because it's like, they have like the little baby barbells and like, you're actually kind of lifting weights and like kind of doing good form with something. So like that would be one where it's like a class that like is directly relevant, at least building some skills, um, with lifting weights and getting you a little bit comfortable with the idea of a barbell, even though it's different, but like you're doing step up squats, lunges, overhead press, like normal lifting things. So like, even though it's like high intensity and like high energy, it's different, but it's kind of like a good translate over. So like, that would be something, I guess, if you're going to pick classes, I would, I would do that. Like before, you know, if you're trying to get into lifting weights, I would do that before, you know, yoga or Zumba or those sorts of things. Um, but of course start where you're comfortable, but I would say like, that's like kind of the one that my brain jumps to, if like, that's the direction you're trying to head in. Yeah. So uh, to kind of go off of that, like, I think when we talk about going and doing a class, like you have a plan, like you have intention, you have something that you're, you're doing specifically. So the next thing is having a plan when you go into the gym. So you're feeling comfortable to go into the weight room, um, or to go into the gym. So instead of getting there and then being like, okay, well now what, now what do I do? Do I jump on the treadmill for 30 minutes? Do I do a couple weightlifting exercises, then go home? So I think preparing is, you know, you have everything ready. Uh, you know, you're going to bring your, your sugar bottle and you have your gym clothes. Um, but you want to also have a plan. So there are so many free resources online that you can find a, a workout program, or you can find just a particular workout. So if you're not comfortable following an actual plan yet, um, you can get on Instagram. And while I don't necessarily <laughs> re recommend following every single Fitspo's, uh, you know, swipe post real, uh, cause a lot of things are for the gram and they're not super realistic. Um, but again, start somewhere, just start, start wherever you're comfortable. I'd rather you go in and do something than nothing. Um, but I would say a really good place to start is just maybe buying a guide or finding a free program that you can follow. And so they have like week one, uh, you know, three or four different workouts, and then you have week two and you're progressing, you have a, a plan. So not only is it going to help when you walk into the gym, but I feel like it's also going to help over time because you have something very specific that you're working towards for a certain period of time. So whether it's an eight week program, a 10 week, 12 week, um, however long it is, that'll just help you get in every single like week. Yeah, totally. And I think, um, definitely just everything you said, I'm going to echo on that. Can I make a small plug for something yeah. free that I have? Okay. So sure. we, I do have a free four week training program and we can link that. And I'll make a note that we link that in the show notes for you. And it's just on Google sheets. And there's just a little video that'll walk you through how to like progress in the gym and all that. So if it's really just like the structure that you need, you can take that. Um, if, and here's the thing too, the Instagram workouts aren't always that bad, depending on who you take it from. So yes. like, I'm just going to be very choosy with my words here, but if they are doing, you know, traditional uh, bread and butter movements, squat, hip hinges, uh, presses, pulls, those sorts of things. Like they're great to follow. What I would recommend is if you just like pick one, find one lower body workout that you like, find one upper body workout that you like, maybe one full body workout, and then write down what's like in their caption and then repeat that actual one lift every week for like four to eight weeks and progress on it. And then scroll through Instagram and find your next set of workouts. Like, don't just, don't just pick and choose what you feel like doing that day, but like actually have that one plan and then repeat and add weight, add reps within the rep range, like progress that movement week to week to week. Um, and so like, that's kind of what, um, I teach people to do with the little free freebie thing. So we'll link that. But like, if you really love your Instagram workouts, if you find some that's, that's great, but like, it's just a matter of like, if you want to make progress it, and feel comfortable, here's the thing, right? This thing is about gym, gym intimidation. It's about feeling comfortable in the gym. The problem that I see is that, if you're jumping from Instagram workout to Instagram workout, you're constantly trying to figure out new exercises, new flows in the gym. And you're not necessarily getting that sense of consistency or like regularity. 
And when you follow a plan for weeks at a time, you get really comfortable, like just knowing which movements come next, what you need to be doing, what weight you used last week, how to progress. Like it just becomes a lot easier to go in the gym and know, feel like you know what you're doing. So I would just recommend like in some way have like a set program for yourself so that you can actually start to get a sense of that familiarity from week to week, instead of constantly feeling like you're trying to figure out a new workout. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that we talk about with our current clients. And and one of the reasons that we don't change their program too frequently is because if we're giving you a new training program every single week, or even every couple weeks, even every month, your first week is just kind of like getting down those new exercises, trying to figure out the weights that are appropriate for you. And then by the time you go into your second week, you're a little bit more comfortable or you're working on that progression. But if you were doing that every single time, you're wasting a lot of time and you're, you're not going to progress as quickly than if you follow something for a little bit longer. So that is definitely one of the reasons that we do it. But again, we'd rather you go into the gym and do something than nothing than not go at all. Right, right. And we do have a full episode about this. It's episode 16, Programming and Progression. So definitely check that out if you're more interested about like, you know, seeing measurable results in the gym and like being stronger over time, because that that's the other thing too, is like, it's not, it's, it's intimidation stops people from getting into the gym. And then, you know, let's expand to another problem really quickly. What, how do you keep going to the gym? A lot of people like have just have issues going over a long period of time and staying consistent. One of the biggest things is that makes people culprit to that is not feeling motivated because they are doing everything in the gym kind of aimlessly. Like, you know, one workout here from Instagram, one workout here from, you know, bodybuilding.com, whatever it is. Right. Um, and so if there's no consistency, you're not seeing yourself actually get better. So there's no motivation to come back and improve. So same concept when you are improving from week to week to week, it's really, really important for your motivation long-term and to be able to actually stick to something, um, it, it, you have to be motivated by the fact that like, Oh, I, I am seeing that I'm getting better this week. Like, this is really cool. And like, this is kind of what Christina and I, like, we, we talk with our clients with, I don't know if, if you've had like calls like this, but like, I'll have someone be like, you know, I just, I just don't really like lifting weights. And like, I used to get so stumped by like someone saying that because I'd be like, well, shit, like, you just don't like it. Like, damn. Right. (laughs) But like really Mm -hmm. what it comes down to is they've never experienced the excitement that comes from actually progressing because they've just kind of gone in and done whatever. So, um, I think that that's really a big piece of it as well. Feeling comfortable, feeling less intimidated, also feeling motivated to go back. Yeah. And so another thing is a lot of people, uh, they think that the purpose of going in and lifting weights is just to burn calories. And so I think the other part of that too, is learning why you're lifting and having more intention behind your workouts. Um, so yeah, so that's like a whole different topic of conversation, uh, that we can, like you said, we have episode 16, highly recommend listening to that. Um, so to kind of get back on track, Um, again, if you have a plan, when you go into the gym, that's going to make it a lot easier. And so I have clients that will either the night before or the morning of, or even just sitting in the car, or even while they're on the treadmill, kind of warming up, they'll take a look at their plan, kind of look everything over and kind of get an idea of what everything is going to look like. Um, and that helps them feel a little bit more comfortable once they actually walk into the gym section. Um, and if you're not sure how to use a machine, or if you're not sure how to do a certain exercise, get on YouTube real quick and look something up or, you know, even just asking someone at the gym for help, like a personal trainer or just someone who looks friendly and looks like they kind of know what they're doing. Um, another thing that can really help, uh, is, you know, if you have, again, your workout buddy, you can kind of figure it out on your own. Um, and if you really want to, I mean, you can skip that exercise and maybe come back to it, uh, at another time. Um, but I mean, we have, literally the internet in our pockets. And so it's super easy to just Google something and and figure it out real quick. Yeah, totally. And I think, um, especially if you have any sort of like plan that you're following, you know, use YouTube and, you know, kind of, I think what really helps sometimes is like putting in the work ahead of time of like, okay, I'm going to watch these videos maybe the night before and like figure out like what these exercises need to look like the night before so that I go in and like, I'm familiar. So I don't have to like sit there, like watching videos while I'm like trying to work out. So, um, a lot of times it's like, if you feel kind of blindsided or lost in the gym, 
if you're trying to figure it out on the fly, I would suggest like really trying to be proactive and like take action on, on planning and like preparing yourself beforehand, uh, whenever you do have the time, because it can kind of allevi- alleviate a lot of that stress. Yeah. Uh, so the next tip we have is wearing something at the gym that makes you feel comfortable and confident. So I think another portion, and again, there's so many different layers, right? There are so many different things that you can experience around, uh, feeling intimidated at the gym. So for more, I would say more so for females, we experience a lot of fear of judgment, um, from other females, depending on what we're wearing, but also like, am I going to get comments? Am I going to get stared at? Um, by, you know, like every gym has that one old creepy dude who just like stares at everyone. Um, but feel, you know, wear something that makes you feel confident. Um, so like I mentioned before earlier, like I feel my best when I am tan. I, I mean, that's just, I don't know where it came from, but I like, if I have a, like, uh, what's the coat, if I have a coat of self tan on, I just feel that much more comfortable and confident to walk into the gym and I don't care. Um, you know, I know some girls, uh, wear makeup at the gym and again, it's like, that's what makes them feel their best. So I know whenever I feel like I have a bomb ass outfit on, like, I just feel like my workouts are like 10 times better. Um, and then I know too, that there are some times where like, I just don't want anyone to talk to me. So I'm going to wear a hat. I'm going to have earbuds in, I'm going to, or like my big headphones. And like, I'm not going to make eye contact with anyone. Cause I'm there for me. Um, so whatever it is, if that's like a huge baggy t-shirt or, you know, sweatpant, whatever it is that makes you get there and, and helps you feel your best. Like that's what you should wear. Yeah, for sure. And I, I want to overemphasize the, the hat keeping earbuds <laughs> in because like, you know, having music and just like being in a place that makes you feel comfortable with like the music you like to listen to, like can really, really help compared to like whatever's playing in the gym, like stereo. And then like a hat, I say this just because it does like eliminate kind of your peripheral vision. And like, it kind of stops you from like looking around and like wondering who's looking at you or like whatever. Um, and so a lot of people do wear like ball caps to the gym and like, it, it just helps with kind of like focusing on you and staying like in your lane. And it's almost like kind of symbolic for that. I I wore a ball cap to the gym freaking every day for probably like four years straight. And so like, it's just, it it really does help. I think if you do focus on like comparing yourself to others, like wondering who's looking at you or something like that. Um, so I, I definitely recommend that. And like, yeah, I swing very hard between the extremes of like, I want to wear like just my leggings and like the crop top. And like, then other days I'm like, I want to be in like four layers of sweats and like a big baggy thing. And like, it just depends on my mood on like, what, how am I going to get the best workout in today? Yeah. Um, so, and then the other thing I want to talk about, and this is like, I feel like the, the next two kind of all go into the same things. It's like, you know, I think, yes, uh, you know, wearing the hat definitely helps you focus more on yourself and not other people. So it's really important to not compare yourself to others. Um, and to also kind of reframe. So I know that, sometimes, especially when I first started out, um, I was very intimidated by other girls who I felt like were looking at me or kind of staring at me. And I was like, oh my God, they're judging me or they're, they think, I don't know, whatever it is, whatever story I made up in my head. Right. Cause like, obviously you don't know, cause they're not yeah. talking to you. Um, they could be like looking at you and be like, wow, she's so pretty. Like, right. Right. Or like, <laughs> wow, I really like her hair. I really like her outfit. Or like, I wonder where she got her shoes from or like, wow, she really knows what she's doing. And I want to watch her and kind of figure it out. So I think it's really important to reframe and you're more than likely probably not being judged. Um, and a lot of people are there with, you know, focusing on themselves and their own workouts. And so, um, if you do have someone that you feel like is looking at you, it could be for a variety of different reasons. Um, so try not to think that you have a gym enemy (laughs) or like all of a sudden you now can't go to the gym or you feel self-conscious about what you're wearing. 
Yeah. A lot of girls have resting bitch face and they might be looking at you and like, you know, they're, you think they're judging or whatever. There was a chick at the gym when I was going in the evenings that I would stare at all the freaking time. Cause I thought she was gorgeous, like had the most banging body and she had a really, really sick half sleeve. And I like could not stop staring at it. So one day I eventually went up to her and I was like, Hey, like if I, if you notice that I like look over at you a lot, it's because I really like your half sleeve. And like, we ended up becoming friends and she's like, Oh, that's so funny. Like, I I'm sorry if like, I've been staring at you all the time. Cause I just think you and your boyfriend, cause we were just boyfriend and girlfriend at the time. She's like, I think you guys are like so adorable. Like that you do your workouts together. And like, you guys seem like such a great couple. And I was like, Oh, like, I, I didn't even notice that she was staring. But if I did, I guess I would have been like, Oh, this is weird. But like that literally that's like what it came down to. It was like, I liked her tattoo. She was like, Oh, relationship goals. So like, <laughs> like it was all good stuff. And she, we actually had a conversation after that. She was like, yeah, so many girls at this gym are just such bitches, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, she was like, it's so nice to meet someone who's like actually nice and re it's refreshing. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I haven't talked to really anyone at this gym. So I, you're the first person I've talked to. So I guess my impression is people are nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, again, and I think it helps just from feeling more confident myself. I am that much more likely to go up and talk to someone or at least just comment or say something like, I love your outfit or like, you know, whatever, it, whatever it is. Um, I try to go out of my way to say something because yeah, I'm the same way. I definitely have resting bitch face and I <laughs> feel like I don't look like the nicest person. Um, and it, same thing. It's like, there might be someone else at the gym who's like super intimidating or in their zone. And if you just like say one thing, like like your whole relationship from that point on will change. Like they'll smile at you when they see you at the gym. Um, they might just, you know, how are you doing? How, you know, what's going on, but just for that one interaction can like completely change how you view that person and what they might be thinking of you. Yep. 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 Um, so to kind of go back a little bit, cause I do want to focus on this is to stop comparing yourself to others is it's super easy to go into the gym and see a bodybuilder and see someone who's getting ready for a competition, someone who's shredded and being like, wow, well, like I'm nowhere near that level and to get intimidated or to feel like, well, whatever I'm doing is not working. So, you know, they may have been going to the gym for years. Uh, they may be suffering from doing hours of cardio and they literally have no life outside of the gym. Um, so I think that that's something to really think about and try not to compare yourself or get down that you're not where you want to be, um, that that can play a lot into like, well, I don't want to go to the gym anymore. Cause I'm not, I haven't reached my goals. Um, so I think that that's really important. And we talk a lot about when people are at the gym, again, they're, they're in their zone, they're focusing on them. Um, but everyone's there to get better. And so no one's going to judge you for being overweight. Um, no one's going to judge you for, you know, being a couple pounds. We talk, you know, ironically, we talk in the, in the beginning, like I'm in off season, but no one really cares oh, that yeah. much. Um, so I think that's super important to think about, you know, before you step into the gym, or if you are starting to get a little bit intimidated by someone else, that a lot of people aren't there to show off. There's some people are, um, but <laughs> there are definitely a few definitely are. Yeah. select like, I'm, people. I'm thinking about, oh, got it. I, so I live in a college town and one of the gyms in particular is known for it just kind of being where all the college kids goes. And, uh, I'm just thinking about one incident in particular, a bunch of dudes and they were all deadlifting and they were all trying to see how much they could deadlift. And it seemed like it was more of like how much noise they could make, how much attention they could draw to themselves. They were deadlifting in sunglasses. And I was like, Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, but most, most people are not there to show off and they're just there to work out. So they're not trying to like I don't know. They're not trying to make you feel bad that you can't do a pull up or you can't do certain things that they're just there to work out. So try really hard to just focus on yourself and what your intention and what you're trying to do at the gym that day. Right. And it's like, it's like, you don't know where they are. Like, okay, maybe this person is overhead pressing 50 pound dumbbells and they're like a small female and you're like, wow, she's so strong. I feel so intimidated. I'm not there yet. What if she has been pressing those 50 pound dumbbells, trying to get three sets of eight to 10 for like 
five months and is like stuck and so frustrated that like she's at this plateau and like that's just where she is right and so like you never know and here's the other thing you never like arrive you never get somewhere and you're like I've made it I am at the pinnacle of my fitness I'm done like I'm retiring like that's not it's not (laughs) professional sports like it's not professional sports you can't just quit when you're ahead like it's forever. It's ongoing. Right. And so you never arrive. You might be 20 years into your journey, you know, at that plateau that I just described and you're still progressing, right. You're still pushing yourself to get better. And so if you focus on, oh, I'm not there yet. So I might as well not, you know, go to the gym. You're completely defeating the process. Um, and the principle of like what this journey is all about, it's about the process and we we've have done and can do another entire episode on process versus outcome oriented, you know, goal setting and motivation, but you have to be in it for the own process of yourself to be able to stick to it, make progress, keep moving forward and eventually get to the place where maybe you are someone in the gym that people look up to, but you will never get there if you don't embrace where you are in the process right now and stop focusing on the outcome and focus on what you need to do today to be better. Like Christine. Yeah. Yeah. So that made me think of pull-ups. So I love doing pull-ups and the reason I do is because it was something that took me so long to be able to do. And it like, I remember just like for probably over well over a year, um, that I would like, I'd have my husband who would like help me all the time. And so when I was finally able to do one, I was like, Oh my God, addicted. (laughs) yeah, addicted. And that's all I want to do. And I've had people come up to me like, Oh my gosh, like how, how can you do that? Like, and so it's the same thing. It's like you like, yeah, I can, I can do sets of them now, but like four years ago, five years ago, like I was that person, like just trying to hop on the bar and see how long I could hold on. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think that's a a really, really good point. So, um, I mean, the last kind of thing we've already kind of talked about this before is just asking someone for help if you're around the gym and you don't know what to do, but, um, of course, Marissa and I are going to talk about this, but hiring a coach or hiring a personal trainer, having a fitness professional walk you around the gym, if you feel comfortable, um, like having someone there in person with you. Um, and of course you don't need to have someone there in person. You can have an online coach. Of course, we've helped a lot of clients break through a lot of different plateaus and whatever they're experiencing, but just knowing that you have someone that you can go to and be like, Hey coach, like, I was really struggling with this today, or, um, you know, I didn't know how to do this or, you know, whatever it is that you might be struggling with, just knowing that you have someone who's going to help you through and, and walk you through how to overcome certain barriers or gives you tips and tricks. And then of course, with, with most coaches, they do have a a team, right? So not only do you have this coach, but you have a bunch of other people who are on the same journey as you that you can reach out to and and kind of say like, what did you guys do to overcome this? Whatever barrier you're experiencing, just knowing that you have someone there for you can make a world difference. Yeah. So then you not only have one person in your corner as a guide, but you have a community as well. Like we talked about finding, um, earlier in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Very well said. Um, I'm not going to plug coaching any farther. I think you did a great job. (laughs) I mean, yeah, with that being said, like Marissa and I, we, we help clients for a living. That's what we do. So if you do want to reach out for a consult with either one of us, I mean, uh, Marissa and I are are super good. We don't pin (laughs) each other against each other. I would, I'd be happy for anyone to work with her, um, as a coach. Um, but yeah, so And same to you. I mean, it's just, it's really a matter of like, Hey, who do you vibe with when you're listening to this podcast? Like based on that, reach out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're here to help. That's why we do these podcasts, but, um, I, I don't really think that I have anything else to add. I think that we did a, a really, really good, uh, job of covering everything. And just to kind of wrap up, you know, maybe we didn't touch on your particular, feelings that you experience. And if there's something that we left out and there's something that you need, reach out to either one of us, reach out to our, uh, our Instagram account and someone, one of us will get back to you and talk to you and walk you through it. And like we plugged earlier, we do have those free Facebook groups, reach out to someone. Um, the best thing to do is just not feel alone in your journey. Um, so 
we hope that this episode helped. We hope that you now have some strategies to go into the gym and to start 2022 off great, which is so crazy to say this year just mm-hmm. absolutely flew by. Um, and then of course, just as a reminder, we will be doing that giveaway. We'll have more specific details on what exactly we're giving away, but because you guys are awesome listeners and you're listening to this in December, uh, you can go ahead and leave your rating and review now, but we hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. You can find both of us on Instagram. You can find me at Christy Lynn fit and Marissa is at Marissa Roy fitness. Thank you guys so much for listening. And we hope to see you back next week.